Hello again everyone, we are back. Uh, we are doing an off-site location shoot. We found this beautiful, beautiful, uh, what do you call it, studio uh, that we're going to shoot from for another installment of The Story. Uh, as we're uh, continuing to catch up, we're on chapter four, I believe, right? Um, which is Deliverance. So, uh, I don't know, this is like week I don't know, seven, seven but, uh, but we're chapter four, we're, we're catching up, and yeah. so, um, if you recall, we ended last week, or last uh, chapter with uh, Joseph, we were talking about Joseph, and uh, basically how he went from, uh, you know, uh, slave to, to deputy, deputy pharaoh. pharaoh, so a, a very dramatic um, leap yep. in, in terms of career and profession, I guess, um, but and, and the the uh, Israelites, you know, loved him kind of yes. thing. Like he was very well known. But then he died. At, yep. He was uh, 147 uh, when he died, and now it's many many years later. I think a couple hundred or, or yeah. something. I I thought it was 400. Uh, something like yeah. that. So at this point, um, Joseph's a thing of the past. Yes, yeah. he's a thing of the past to both the Egyptians and the Israelites. No yeah. one really remembers or respects whatever he did. Like, imagine 500 years ago now, like, people don't really care that much anymore. So at this point, the Egyptians have become a little bit annoyed with the Israelites because mm -hmm. they're sort of taking over the place. And the Egyptians are like, hey, this is our land. You guys came here. You can't just take over. So they start to repress the Israelites and begin to use them as slaves. Exactly. Go ahead. Sorry, and uh, and yeah, and so they they were using them as slaves, and but the uh, Israelites were like they weren't uh, combatant to it at, mm -hmm. at this point, and as as Wemmy had uh, alluded to, is they start they began to multiply or not even began to they just naturally multiplied, and they were becoming more a lot of more, babies. Yeah, they were becoming more <laughs> and more numerous, and so the pharaoh was just like whoa, like. Like, we don't want more of you than us, exactly. because then they feared that they'd be overruled by the Israelites, who are strangers to this land. So what did the Pharaoh do? So at this point, the Pharaoh decided to start killing the sons, because, you know, without sons, you know, can't yeah. really procreate it, as much. It was only the firstborn sons, yes, right? The yes, son, the firstborn sons of the um, families. Yes. So Moses' mother, I guess, <laughs> I'm all kinds of crazy here. Now, as Moses was born, and at the time his mom was like, hey... I don't want my son to be killed. I just gave birth to this new baby. So gave him to his sister Miriam, who went and put him by um, by the river for the Pharaoh's daughter to find him. So Pharaoh's daughter found a little baby in a basket and she's like, hey, he's can so I keep cute. It? So she goes to her dad, she's like, Daddy, can I keep him and raise him as, you know, my son, as one of us? So dad was like, alright, sure, whatever, because you know, can't say no to his daughter. So at this time she's looking for someone to nurse the child because unfortunately she can't nurse the child. And obviously out of the woodworks comes Miriam. She's like, hey, I know a woman who can nurse him. So she goes and gets her mom, Moses' mother, and Moses' mother nurses Moses. And upon when she's done nursing him, gives him back to the Pharaoh's daughter. She's at her in her mind at this point, he's going to have a great life. I mean, he's set for life. He'll never be tortured. He, he's good. So then we go saved forth her, yeah. to, yeah. Saved, saved her son. So, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. Moses was raised as an Egyptian yeah. in the household of Pharaoh. Yeah, in the, yeah, I was just, sorry. You yeah. already, already mentioned it. Yep. Yeah. With his brother, not, I guess, half-brother, half brother, brother, yeah. whatever, yeah. raised with Ramses as his brother. And as they grow older, two boys in the house is going to take over after dad dies. That mm -hmm. whole issue starts to come up about. And we find Moses finds himself one day in the, um, out in the fields. Out in the fields, yes, yeah. with the slaves. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dave's turn. So, um, so yeah. So uh, Moses is out in the field where the oppressed uh, Israelites are working, and uh, they're working under the like slave rule of the Egyptians. And there's one particular Egyptian is kind of mistreating this uh, Israelite slave. I guess, I guess more, more than yeah, more. I was going to say, I mean, you're mistreated regardless, yeah. but yeah. So, so Moses doesn't take kindly to it. Now, whether it was uh, an act of, hey, he's a brother Israelite, or yeah. whether it's just like, hey, that's not cool. Yeah. Not sure, but, you know, I like to think it was just because it was not cool, but anyway. Um, but Moses takes, uh, takes extreme action, and he actually kills the Egyptian in front of all the other Egyptians. So And the this, Israelites. And, and the Israelites. So this is all kinds of, like making the headlines because basically this is a huge act out against kind of 
command under the Pharaoh. Yeah. So um, so word gets back to the Pharaoh and to Ramses and, and everybody and now if we thought there was brotherly, you know, yeah. feud before, now it's uh now it's, it's a problem. Yeah. So at the time so Ramses was just like, Hey, we gotta find Moses. So Moses is being searched for it frantically, so it was like, I'm gonna peace out. I, so he runs away because he knows this is this is bad. He runs away to the wilderness and he's out there, you know, dying of thirst and whatever and these seven girls run into him. They're like, hey, you know, you don't look too well. Do you need some water? So they got him some water from the well and gave him some water. And their father, they took him back home and whatever care from the father was just like, hey, you know, I like this dude. Yeah, their father's a priest, by the way. Yes. Yeah. So then he gives one of his daughters to Moses to marry. Yes. Which he does and she gives birth to a son for him. So whatever, years later they're chilling, you know, raising a family, doing their thing. He's become one of the Levites. Um, and he's out one day wandering as he tends to do. Yeah. <laughs> and he sees a bush that's on fire. Burning bush. The burning bush. And so basically, so, uh, you know, Moses kind of looks over it and is just like, huh, that's, that's odd. But kind of just passes it by. But then uh, a voice talks to him and says, uh, Moses. And so Moses says, yes, I am here. Um, and it tells him to come closer and come closer and eventually take off his uh, shoes or sandals. Yeah. Um, because he found himself standing on holy on ground. Holy ground yeah. And he's just like, you know, who are you then? Who was talking to me? And this is where the famous, not famous, but it's one of the most profound descriptions we have of God is, I am that I am. He's just like, I am that I am. That's who I am. I am that I am. He's like, oh, all right, cool. I'll come talk to you. <laughs> so he goes forth and him and God have a conversation. Mm hmm. Do you want to go on the conversation? Uh oh, no. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, no, I can actually, sorry. Um, so basically, uh, uh, God is selecting Moses. He's, he's saying, Moses, like, you know, you, you've seen everything kind of thing. You've seen a lot. You need to go uh, free your people from, uh, from, from being oppressed by uh, the Egyptians. And so Moses is just like, wait, what? Like, me? Um, he takes, it kind of gets taken a step back because Moses wasn't a, uh, fluent speaker, he wasn't a, a great people person, um, and so he kind of was a little, little con confused, a little concerned, that God's just like, you know what, here, I'll give you a sidekick, I'll give you a helper in Aaron, mm -hmm. um, who is that people person, and he can present uh, your ideas, or these ideas, and help you free the Israelites from the oppression of Pharaoh. Yeah. And so, so what happens? So, eventually, Moses is just like, you know, Again, and said, I can't do this. So God said, you know what? I'm going to be with you. Like, I've got your back. And you can do this. But Moses is just like, eh, no. What am I supposed to tell them? I don't know what I'm doing. And again, God's like, hey, I said, got your back. I've got this. Moses is like, nah, but what if I say it and they don't listen to me? Because I'm not so good at talking. So at this point, God's like, you're really trying my nerves. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> So it's like, all right, fine, here's what's going to happen. Um, the people are going to listen to you, but if you must, I will, you know, give you someone to go with you. And um, do you want to go on? What? I completely just said that. But you didn't say those parts. I did. I said he gave him a sidekick and Aaron. But you didn't talk about the, like, what do you call it? <laughs> the, um, the argument. Okay, well, the, but that was after, so then that's when I handed it off to you. Okay. Like, what's going on? There's nothing going on. I'm just trying to find the chapters. Okay. Jeez. So Moses gets to, goes back to um, Pharaoh, and he's like, all right, hey, um, I'm here to tell you to let the people go. And Pharaoh, obviously, who is now Ramses' his brother, is kind of like really... Laughs in his face. Yeah, no, nice try, no. I'm looking for you to kill you, and you want me to let people go? So it's like, hey, I have God with me, and I'm going to do the following things if you don't let them go. So Ramses is like, try me, let's see what you can do. So now Moses begins to perform the wonders and really the things that God had kind of told him to do. Like, hey, you're going to lay down your staff, and it's going to turn into a snake. Right. So Moses lays down his staff. Bang. Turns into a snake. Ramses is like, my magicians can do that. Go get them. They'll do the same thing. So they laid down their um, staff and their, made their staff turn into a snake as well. Mm -hmm. So Ramses is just like, so who's this so-called god you have? Because my magicians can do the exact same thing. 
So Moses now starts, like, you know, to do these different things or whatever. And, um... So he says, so the, another one he does is, uh, take, yeah, take, take your staff and stretch out your arms, uh, stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt and uh, all the streams and the canals, uh, and they will turn to blood. Yep. So that was, that was another very, you know, significant, uh, change, obviously, for all the waters in, in Egypt to turn to blood. Um, but, uh, but when they did it in, uh, so they did it in front of Pharaoh, and all the waters uh, turned to blood, and all the fish in the Nile, they died, and the river sm uh, smelled so bad, and, you know, it, it was awful. But then Pharaoh's magicians did the same thing. Yep. So, again, no respect to Moses and, and Aaron. Correct. So, now, seven days later, after the whole Nile situation, and Moses goes back, and he's just like, hey, let the people go. Pharaoh said, no. Moses is like, all right, I'm going to send a plague of frogs. Mm -hmm. So Moses, you know, what's the connection to God, sends a plague of frogs to the land. And Pharaoh's just like, magicians, you got this. So what do they do? So now the magicians are just like, yeah, here, we can do this. Boom, we do it. And now there's even more frogs. So they weren't really thinking. They, yeah, they, they think were, about that one. They replicated, they replicated what they didn't know how to get did. rid of it. But now they have double as many plagues of frogs, which yeah. is just all kinds of silly. So Pharaoh's pissed off and I'm sure there are frogs everywhere. So it's like, all right, Moses, if you get rid of the frogs, I'll let the people go. So what does Moses do? Gets he gets rid, rid of the frogs. frogs. And, and what does Pharaoh do? No, the people yeah. go. No. <laughs> and so, so then this is when I think Moses probably... Moses and God kind of start getting a little angry. Like, you're just like, you're doing one thing after another. Yeah, trying to one-up. Mm -hmm. So then then the big one with uh, Moses hits the dust with his staff and, and gnats swarm the land. So yeah. now we have a swarm, swarms of gnats all over. Like, that's not going to be fun. Like, at least we're, frogs are just kind of hopping around. But, yeah. Uh, now we got gnats. Uh, what else comes? And the magicians couldn't replicate right, this. Sorry. They were not able to bring the gnats. So Pharaoh was just like, huh, okay, I see I see this god you're talking about. But again, at this point, his heart has become so hard against this whole, you know, shenanigans going on. Just like, no, I'm not letting them go. And then we have another round of plagues with flies. Yeah. No one likes flies. I don't like flies. And, and these were intense flies. These aren't just like house flies. Because yeah. these flies killed livestock. Yeah. So... It, These they were killed, deadly flies. Yeah, apparently they killed all the livestock. Like I, I can imagine like horse flies or deer flies or something, but you know, some serious flies. Yeah. Um. So Pharaoh. So then it was just like, okay. Pharaoh's like, fine, fine, fine. Then I'll let you go. Oh no, not yet. He's like, I'll let you go. Oh. And he's just like, no, no, I won't. Come back. Just kidding. <laughs> so then the hail. Yep. Man, and he's just like, it's one thing after another. Um, so it was, uh, and they had boils. There was a plague of boils, yep. a plague on the livestock, a plague of hail, thunderstorms, yep. locusts, and frightening times of darkness. Correct. So yes. just every kind of possible terrible thing happened to the Egyptians at this time. Yeah. And Pharaoh was just like, "No, I am not letting you go." And at this point, like in my head, I'm like, "Really, dude? Is it that deep?" Like. Just just let him go. Just let him go. You've killed all your animals. No one has food to eat. You're killing the people because, you know, the flies are biting them. They're getting leprosy and all kinds of crazy things. Just let him go. But yeah. not no. Pharaoh. Not Pharaoh. So, basically, get deep yeah. at this so point. now it, it, it hits a real critical turning point where it's just like, you know what? One more. One more uh, plague and, and that's Finish it. Finish like, them off at that. Yeah, and, and you're, there's no way you're going to say no. Yes. Um, we really wish you had, but... You know, Didn't want to get to this. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. And so the last plague is uh, that the first... Uh, the the plague family's of the firstborn. firstborn son. Yeah, the yes. plague of the firstborn. So this gives birth to Passover, as we know it, which is mainly celebrated by the Jewish religion, also tied to Easter, based on the calendar thing. But that's a whole other situation. So... Um, the, the plague on the firstborn is that the firstborn of every household will be killed. There will be the angel of death will come by at night, and every firstborn son will be killed. Mm -hmm. So Moses now went over with an Aaron went over to the Israelites and like, hey guys, so this is gonna happen tonight, and here's what we need you guys to do: you're gonna kill a lamb, yeah. sacrificial lamb to God. You're gonna take the blood of the lamb paint and paint a cross on your front door, really. 
so that when the angel of death comes by, he will pass you over and won't kill anyone in your household. Mm -hmm. So they all obeyed and they did as they were told. So at night, the angel of death came by and the firstborn of all the Egyptian sons were killed, including Pharaoh's firstborn son. And that hit home kind of deep because based on the whole lineage thing, he's the next in line to the throne. He's dead. Yeah. That's not a good look. So, but now is finally the time, unfortunately, when Pharaoh finally realizes that, okay, this is serious, so he, he finally uh, accepts the, the original request, and he lets the Israelites go. Yes. And so it was excruciatingly unfortunate to get to this point, but, uh, but the end result uh, is that now the Israelites are free under Moses, and Moses takes them with them. But, of Pharaoh, course, Pharaoh, this tricky old man, he's just never satisfied. He's just like, no, I am upset. I can't let them go. My son just died. No way. So after he had actually let them go this time, they had actually left the land. Physically left. Yeah, so he kind of couldn't just stop them. So he sent his chariots. He's like, chase after them. Go get them back. Kill them. Whatever you need to do, they're not going to be free. Mm -hmm. So the chariots and all his armies go and start storming after, trying to catch up the Israelites and get them all. And at this point, they're by the Red Sea, and Moses is just like, hey, God, uh -oh. so <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're kind of hit a dead end here. Yeah, Where do we go? We can't they, swim. They don't we exactly don't have boats. have boats. We have no time to build a boat. What do we do? And so, uh, as probably many of you know, uh, God uh, kind of grants Moses this ability. He says, raise your staff and your arms and part the waters of the Red Sea, and they do, and basically the waters... Uh, build up into walls and Moses and the Israelites just walk on right through. But as the Wemi has just, said, they're coming. They're coming. We can hard. get through this. They see this open land. They're like, oh, we got them well, now. I can only presume they're just chasing. Like yeah. they see them in the yeah, sights kind they, of thing. Yeah, right? it's like we got them now. Yeah. But unfortunately, as they're entering the sea, the Israelites are at the other end kind of walking out and the water just yeah. closed back and they all perished, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But the Israelites now have their freedom. Mm -hmm. And they are in the free land now in the in wilderness. The wilderness yeah. And taking us to the place of the wandering, which we had previously talked about. So if you kind of want to know what happens next, go back and watch that episode. I believe it was episode one. <laughs> and you'll be, all uh, kinds of it. You'll be yeah. caught up to what happens next with the Israelites and Moses. Well, there's one in between. Is it? Oh, yes. You'll be caught up. You get the point, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but now let's go to the lesson. We've given a very, very um, detailed recap of this. It was week. a it was a very busy chapter. Yeah, it was very busy. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So now let's talk about how Moses felt starting this whole process. Um, Intimidated. Yes. Uh, 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 the opposite of courageous <laughs> that word's not coming to me. okay um anyway yeah scared um and and just not not the ill-equipped yep and just not the right fit for the job yeah no, those are all the things that you know that he was feeling and he struggled with like self-doubt yeah he struggled with that for a lot of reasons because one childhood experiences. He's always battled against Ramses. He's always been the lesser one. And he's just had those childhood experiences that weren't so pleasant for him to be like, hey, I can rule and lead a nation to freedom. He didn't have that. He also had, there were cultural expectations set of him that, hey, you know, you're supposed to do this. And he's just like, based on what I'm supposed to do, I can't lead a nation. Right. I'm not the guy that's, you know, the people who lead that's nations, awesome. they're big, they can talk, they're this, they're mm -hmm. that. So that was kind of an issue, and also his past failures, like when he tried for, when he tried to save the Israelite and be, by killing the Egyptian, like that was kind of, like it was a success, but it was a failure because when he did that, Pharaoh was like, "You guys are gonna pay for that." Yeah, there's so obviously repercussions. There were repercussions, so they were their workload was doubled. They had to pay for what Moses did, and that's not a good feeling. Right. So he's had a lot of these little issues, and it kind of created self doubt for him that hey, I can't do this. I can't go speak for people, because the last time I tried to do that, look how that turned out. But, but <laughs> go ahead. But, uh, basically the, the lesson that you, know, you take away from this is that God, he never leaves you ill-equipped. You're never, if you're chosen, you're able to do that because he's always going to be there to support you, to give you, provide in any ways that you need, and to, to 
give you the abilities that you seem to think you don't have, he knows you have them. Yeah, they're right yeah, there. Exactly, and, and he's able to pull them out. And, like, yeah, was that, you know, do you want to extend on that, or did I hit him? No, I think you okay, hit him okay. very well. Yeah, those they're always in you, and just reach it down between your faith, your power, your people around you, and you will find the strength you need to get through those hard times, those times of self-doubt. Mm -hmm. It's always there. And when we talk about this situation with the upper story and lower story that we try to always bring in, the upper story we have here is that the Exodus, which is the whole Egyptian Israelite freedom, it's called the Exodus. And the Exodus as a whole is a miracle and a get to know me story. This is how God is helping the people to see him, he's revealed himself to the people that, hey, I can do these things for you guys, I got your back. You gotta trust in me and have faith. And we got this. Together we got this. So it's a get to know me kind of story for God mm -hmm. and his people. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's a deliverance story. It's a story of deliverance from suffering to oppression, freedom. Yeah. From yeah. oppression to freedom. From resistance. From pain. Hardship. From yeah, all those things to another side. And it's not saying, it's saying that those, the good times are going to come. That freedom is going to come. It might take time. Mm -hmm. It might take struggles because I'm sure for the Israelites it was just like the first time Moses came they were like yes we're gonna be free no we're not yay yeah. no we're not a lot of, a lot of roller coaster yeah. of emotions yeah and I'm sure a lot of pain in getting to that correct yeah. so I'm sure some people would start acting out and be like I'm gonna be free tomorrow let me go steal something yeah. I'm gonna be free tomorrow let me do this but you know we have to try to hold on to the get to the other side and realize that there's an upper story working around in our lives and then I think finally the salvation story in it, the story of being saved from those things I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of just wraps that all up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, yeah, I think that's a great over overview. Um, very, very densely packed mm -hmm. <laughs> week. That's yeah, for sure. Absolutely, but you know that that's kind of it, it's interesting. Like as we read through the story, like mm -hmm. it is, uh, you know, there are. Uh, chapters that really have just uh, an abundance of information um, and uh, and just kind of meaning and, and uh, learnings and, and things like that. Um, so yeah, so you, you have to take them all and we just want to get them out to you. Yep, and get to know Yahweh, the I am that I am. Get, yes. to, get to know Yahweh? Yes, yes. The I am that I am. Oh, so that's pretty much what I've got for you guys cool. this week. Anything else, Dave? I don't think so. All right. Well, keep your head up and keep focused from, on the upper story. Yeah. I was just going to say from across the globe because we're so far away from home. We are. <laughs> Hope you guys have a nice week. Talk to you later. See ya. Bye.